Dr. Rubenstein, and we're at the Air Museum in Schenectady, New York. And this will be a little disjointed because my grandsons are here, two of the three, and they're not going to have any social media uh, viewing. So, in any case, we're going to get started and uh, we'll see what's going on. Oh, it turned it around. I did. Good. You'll hear them, but you won't see them. And here we go, the museum entrance. Tour guide, I'm gonna take you folks out to the C-130, and I'm gonna show you folks a little something that uh, very few people actually get a chance to see, but everybody uh, from the Army to our heroes across the runway over at Scranton can do every day, right this way. Stay with us. Oh, let's go. Come on. Okay. Well, there's a lot here. Haven't been saying much because there's been so much going on. It looks like they're going to let us go inside, which will be very interesting. All right, let's go over by the tail. See something you've never seen. Yeah. Come on over here. This is a C-130. There's a lot of people in here. Yeah. 
Well, welcome aboard the C-130, ladies and gentlemen. This is one of the main transports of the U.S. Air Force. It's also one of the most numerous that the U.S. Air Force has. And she's done anything and everything you can think of. And, oh, we got a question already. Um, what is, what is that? This? Well, well. Yeah, well, well, you give me a second, I'll, yeah. I'll explain yeah. to you fully. This is just my first time here. Oh, great. Well, welcome welcome to ESAM. But yeah, well, basically what it is, this is a stock C-130. Now, a lot of you folks have seen the LC-130, so the ski birds, right. those are being piloted by our heroes across the runway over <laughs> at Stratton. At Stratton, okay. And that's, and that's one of the many different see. variances of the C-130. The one that everybody loves the most is the AC-130. Does anybody know why? Because the AC-130 can bring the pain to the enemy. Puff the Magic Dragon. Huh? Puff the Magic Dragon. Wasn't it? Uh, well, well, it's a modern day descendant of Puff the Magic Dragon. Okay. Uh, what it is is that you're talking about the AC-47. Oh, okay. The AC-130, they go by the name of Ghost Rider, uh, Whispering Death. I mean, to put it in simple terms, ladies and gentlemen, an AC-130, despite its size, it could kill a Russian tank with no problem at all. Uh -huh. Okay, now I'm gonna now to show you some of the features of the C-130 that no one knows about. This right here, this was given to us by our heroes at Stratton. This is one of their training pallets, or as they call it, their cargo delivery system. So if you ever see them flying around with the ramp down and all that, mm -hmm. this is what's going to be coming out the back because they usually do it during the week mm -hmm. and and they do their training drops over here at Stratton or if you see them over at Albany, that means they're doing their touch and goes. So, so yeah, they are flying around the area and they do uh, some pretty fancy flying in the C-130. So. But yeah, this is a training pallet. This gives you folks an idea of what they're dropping out, but it also shows you the, the cargo, types of cargo that the C-130 could be able to drop out. Because I mean, this can serve as uh, a food delivery pallet where you can drop everything from from muffins to eggs to uh, the popcorn. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so do I. So do I. Okay, uh, you got a question? Um, what is that there? <laughs> well, that's actually the next spot I'm gonna be going to. Alright. Now, now, now the C one thirty, as I said, she's very versatile and then she has done everything. She can deliver everything from the mail to the paint, but she can also serve as the world's largest ambulance. Now, right up front here, I'll show you. And also if you folks like you can have a seat where our heroes have sat oh, when they've gone into battle or come back from battle victorious. Okay, good. Good. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. Hey, you still got time. I mean, the Air Force is still hiring, so you can uh, join the Air Force. Only thing is, is that you gotta graduate high school and be 18 years old. Okay, I'm 11. You got seven more years before you can join the Air Force. Yeah, she, I'm a sixth grader. I okay. graduated fifth grade. Yeah, like I said, yeah, you got, she, you got, she you got said high school. Okay, well, well, like I said, you gotta be in college or 18 years old to to uh, join the Air Force. So, if you wanna join the Air Force? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Hey, I got a sunshine. I have three more Huh? Hey, same little Same place. Oh, cool. Okay. That's good to know. That's good to know. Okay. Listen, listen. All right. I hate Cool. Oh, I'm Okay. Now, right here, folks. This gives you an idea of how you can turn the C-130 into the world's largest ambulance. When the C-130 comes off the assembly line, they have these poles. And what they do is that they can stretch all the way from the bulkhead up front to the bottom of the ramp in the back, and you can configure it for whatever particular mission. 
what you can do is you can either have additional seats like these red ones right here going right down the middle which increase the passenger capacity to depending on the troops that are on board up to 100 people or in this case you got it configured so you can so you can see how we are able to medevac our people out of the battle zone if they get injured in any way. Because what it is is that these poles, they go down the center and they got these straps right here that you can be able to adjust to be able to accommodate stretchers like what you see here. And above your head, we got a wounded warrior Rick. But as you can see, he's giving a thumbs up. He's letting okay. everybody know is that he might be injured, but he's okay and he'll be back in battle shortly. Right over there is RC, our nurse. She's, she's maintaining a watch over Rick, so we know that she's doing a good job. And that's how you can turn the T-130 into the world's largest ambulance. Now, how many folks are interested in clandestine operations? Oh, I think everybody is. Now, how many of you youngsters out there remember the Iranian Revolution of 1979? <laughs> Any youngsters? Oh, okay, looks like we all, like we all youngsters. Great. Well, up here, I got a little presentation about a classified operation Ooh. that the C-130 would have been part of. And there's a little bit of a secret to that, and I'll tell you that right after the end of it. I just got to see where it's at first. So, if anybody wants to come on up, come on up. Okay, yeah. Get the get the little kids up front, have the right. taller folks in the back. Right. And we'll see where we're at. Okay, well, it's near the beginning, but just give you an idea. I'm going up into the cockpit to take a look around when no one else is up here and uh, interesting. Very interesting. I'm getting up here before everybody else can get up here. And there will be a bunch of people coming up here. I have no doubt. And that is the way out. I'm going to turn this off while I get out of here. Well, that was quite a, uh, quite a look. I don't know if I was actually recording just a few minutes ago or not, so this might be a repeat, and I might put some together. But this is, uh, this is an interesting exhibit. That is Stratton Air Base away over there. It's connected to county airports over there. We'll be seeing more today. Um, but we do have to be careful, this is an active, active anyway. This is the Supermarine Scimitar, and there was quite a story with that, but I missed it. The scimitar that's over there is the descendant of the Spitfire. Oh, yeah. 
This is an F-14 Tomcat. outside and get as many pictures as you want but no. this is Maverick Bird. This is the F-14 Tomcat. That's a super parasol. Super parasol. That is a super parasol. And this is a Tomcat. So, there's a Hughes. There are the stairs here. Yeah. Bell Airport. Oh, they got all types of things here. There's something for wind tunnels. That's something different. Hang gliders. Hang gliders. Okay, you guys impressed? That, I believe, is a T-34 trainer over there. That's a BT-13, I was told. And they're going to be moving that plane. Activity going on around here. That's a BT 13. <laughs> I think I've already said that for uh, airflow testing. Thank you. 
The Concord. There we go. This took me a second. It's not the real Concord, obviously. Well, it's a rendition. It might have been a wind tunnel, something of that nature. This is the uh, hangar for the Air Museum. And um, you'll see a lot inside. A lot of the exhibits, things of that nature, I'll be showing you as we kind of delve in and out. I am going to walk over here by these, these other aircraft. Um, there was a bunch of cars here before. So you'll see me dovetail this in with that and so uh, let's go over here and take a quicker look so this is we went through the C-130 over there that you'll see and we went through the two galleries and you'll see that coming up And that is a tank of some sort. Hmm. Uh, I guess we didn't we missed that. That's our look at the uh, museum here today. It's uh, interesting, a lot to see, a lot to do. Um, and it'll be pieced together. So in that way, it might seem a little disjointed at times, but that's just the way it was. Have a good day. See you later. Oh yeah, don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell, and hit the like button.